So how many of you are excited to be here this afternoon? Okay, that didn't sound real exciting. How many of you guys excited to be here this afternoon? All right, that sounded better. So one of my number one goals this, uh, this afternoon while we're here to learn some leadership skills, and how many of you are excited to learn about leadership skills? Okay, very good. How many of you believe you already possess some leadership skills? Excellent, I'm glad to see that, because if you're a member of the National Juniors Honor Society, you've already created some leadership skills. My goal is that we, we increase those leadership skills. Now, I also want to make sure that this afternoon we have a lot of fun. How many of you would like to have a lot of fun this afternoon? Okay, so one of the ways to have fun is that we really increase the energy level in the room. Okay, so everybody look at your partner right now. Just turn your table, find a partner, look at your partner. Okay, give them a high five and say, you're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. All right, everybody look at your partner. All right, everybody's eyes on me. Eyes on me. Everybody look at your partner, give them a high five, say, you're a 10. Okay, so as an effective leader, who can tell me what one of the number one goals of an effective leader is? Does anybody have any ideas? You, yes, go ahead. So you've got to have a positive attitude. How many of you would agree with that? I'd agree with you. But what's the number one goal of an effective leader? What does that leader want to accomplish for his team or her team? Yes, ma'am. Like, so to qu complete the objective, what's your name? Anna. So everybody give Anna a round of applause. So what Anna said was to complete the objective. So how many of you would agree that a great leader wants their team to complete the objective? Would you guys agree with that? I'd agree with you completely. So what that means is that a leader's number one goal for their team is to achieve a high level of results. How many of you would agree with that? Okay, so when we look at our partner and we give him a high five and we say you're awesome, okay, or we look at our partner and we give him a high five and we say you're a 10, what we're actually doing right there is we're increasing our partner's confidence. How many of you would agree to be a great leader in school, in this world, that you have to have a high level of confidence? I'd agree with you guys completely. So I'm going to put confidence right down here. Now, every one of us in this room, we have what I call a level of confidence, or we have an internal concept of ourselves. How many of you understand what the word concept means? Okay. How many of you understand what the word internal concept means? Okay. So if you have an internal concept of yourself, that's a belief of what your level of confidence is as a leader. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. So right now what I want to do is we're going to do a real quick exercise. Everybody should have a blank piece of paper at their table. So what I, what I want you guys to do with this piece of paper is I want you to think for about 30 seconds right now what you believe your internal confidence is or what your personal concept of yourself as a leader is right now. What do you think your level of leadership skills are right now? Let me give you a grading scale. On 0 to 10, 0 being 0 and 100%, 10 being 100%, I want you to put on that piece of paper what you believe your internal confidence is or your personal concept is as a leader right now. Put the number on the page and fold it in half. You don't have to show it to anybody and then put it in the center of the table. Put your personal number on the page, zero to 10, zero being zero, 10 being 100%. What you believe your level is as a leader, put the number on the page, fold it in half, put it in the center of the table. Just pick a number, any number, doesn't matter. There's no right answer here, there's no wrong answer here. 
Now, who in the room is good at math? I need somebody at each table that's good at math. Okay, take all the papers in your table, add them up, divide them by the number of people at your table, and when you have your table's number, stand up. Okay, take all the papers at your table, add them together, divide them by the number of people at your table, when you have your number, stand up. You guys understand? Add them all together when you have your number. Divide it by the number of people at your table. Stop. All right, very good. You guys did a great job with that. So when the energy level goes high, it gets noisy, okay? The way we bring the energy level down is I go five, four, three, two, one, stop. Everybody stops. Everybody focuses on me. Does everybody understand? Yes? yes. All right, very good. So let's find out what the room's concept is. This exercise is to find out what your guys' concept is of yourself as leaders right now. So what's your guys' number? Seven. Seven. Wow, I'm very impressed. We got a seven. What's your guys' number? Six and three quarters. What is it? Six point three five. Okay, let's just give them a seven. Round that up to seven. Yes, ma'am. Seven. Seven. Seven point two five. Seven point. We'll call that a seven. We'll give them a seven. Six point five. Six point five. So we'll round that up to seven. Seven point forty four. Seven point forty four. We'll call that a seven. Eight point five. An eight point five. We'll call that a nine. And eight. All right. Now, everybody give those leaders that just stood up a round of applause. Now, now listen, all right, listen up, guys. I thought you were going to make the math difficult on me. It sounds like you guys think that you're a seven. Most of the answers in the room, with the exception of a couple, were right in that seven range. Would you agree or disagree? Okay, so now listen, I'm not a very good artist. Okay, so as I draw up here, if I make mistakes or I do something that's funny, it's okay for you guys to make fun of me. Is everybody okay with that? All right, so I'm not a real good artist, but right now, right now, this is what you guys believe your concept is. You're a number seven. Okay, now. To be the best leader you could possibly be, what number would you want to be? Ten. You'd want to be a 10. You'd want to be a 10. So right now, you guys are here. How many of you would like to wake up every day of your life and operate at level 10? Okay, so over the next hour, over the next hour and 15 minutes, my goal is to take you guys from a 7 to a what? Ten. To 10. Now, the only way you guys can go from a 7 to a 10 is by increasing your what? Your confidence, which will also increase your internal what? Concept. And the higher your concept, the greater your results would be. Guys, this starting to make a little bit of sense to you? Now, I've got to share something with you. I do this with adults all over the United States of America. So this is the first time I've ever had a chance to do this with middle school students. So I'm really very, very excited to be with you guys here this, uh, today, this afternoon. But I, I got to tell you something, I'm also very surprised. Because when I do this throughout the country, guess what the internal concept of adults is? Yeah. No, they believe there are four. So you guys are already three points ahead. You're at 70% and adults believe they're at fours. They believe they're at 40%. So everybody look at your partner, give them a high five, say that was awesome. <laughs> everybody look at your partner, give them a high five, say I'm a 10. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, stop. All right, now guys, I'm gonna give you the countdown. I'm gonna to count to three, and on one three, I want the entire room to say, I'm a 10. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Okay, here you go, on three. One, two, three. I'm a 10. Woo! Guys, that was powerful. 
I felt some energy there. That is already starting to increase your guys' confidence, and that's already starting to increase your personal concept. So one of the things that we're going to do, rather than just me up here talking, we're going to have some exercises. We're going to have some group discussions this afternoon. So if we're going to have some group discussions this afternoon, one of the things that we need to learn to become an effective leader, you must be a great communicator. How many of you would agree with that? I agree with you completely. Now, to be a to, to number one skill in our ability to communicate is our ability to follow directions. So, to be a leader, you've got to be a great communicator. Now, the one number one skill in our ability to communicate is our ability to what? Listen and follow directions. Would everybody agree with that? So, there's going to be an opportunity for, for this afternoon for you guys to show your ability to listen and follow directions. So what we're going to do right now, at each one of our tables, we are going to create discussion leaders. So I want to talk to you about the role of the discussion leader at your table. When your table is giving a topic to discuss, if you are the discussion leader at the table, you need to make sure that everybody at your table stays on topic. If I give you a topic to discuss, I don't want you talking about lunch this afternoon. Okay? I don't want you talking about the basketball game last week. I want you guys to stay on topic. Does everybody understand? Yes? Okay. Now, we also want to make sure that everybody at the table participates in the discussion. We want input from everybody at your table. Input from each and every one of you is very, very valuable. Yes? Okay. Now, we want to make sure that all discussions are positive. Because to be a great leader, we already learned from one of our other students is that we have to stay very what? Positive. We've got to maintain a positive attitude. Now, if you're the discussion leader at the table, you've got to take notes for sharing. The reason why we're going to take notes for sharing is if you are the discussion leader, at the end of that discussion, I will invite two leaders to the microphone. And the microphone's right here, guys. Okay, and what you will do, if you're the discussion leader and you took notes at your table, you will come to the microphone and you will discuss with the entire room what your table discussed. Does everybody in the room understand the role of the discussion leader? Yes? yes? Now, sometimes when I do this with adults, they don't want to come to the microphone and share because people are afraid sometimes of speaking in front of a group. You guys don't have to do anything this weekend you don't want to do. So if you end up being chosen to be the discussion leader at your table and you choose not to come to the front of the room and share, what you need to do is you need to pass those discussion leader powers to somebody at your table that is willing to come to the front of the room and share. Does everybody understand that? Okay. But can I talk to you guys about something for just a second? Along your journey in life so far to the point where you're at right now and throughout the rest of your lives to accomplish the results that you want in life, is it possible that you might run into obstacles or you might run into things that are uncomfortable for you? How many of you would agree with that? So what is the best way for you to tackle that obstacle? What's the best way for you to overcome what might be uncomfortable for you if it allows you to achieve a higher level of results in your life? What would be the best way to tackle that obstacle? What's your name? Lexia. Lexia. What would be the best way to tackle that obstacle? Face, the obstacle? Face that obstacle. Hit it head on. So I'll just tell you guys, one weekend I was teaching class and I had a student that come up to me at lunch on the first day and they said, I am scared to death to talk in front of a group of people. I am afraid to go to the microphone. I said, well, then you need to be the very first person in the room that goes to that microphone and speaks. Now, they did that. And when they went to the microphone, you could tell they were a little nervous and they were a little scared, but the entire group was very, very supportive. Guys, can we be very encouraging today and be very, very supportive of our entire team? Yes? Would you guys agree with that? Now, this person went to the microphone on day one and they spoke a little bit in the morning and then they spoke a little bit in the afternoon on day one. On day two, they spoke in the microphone three times. On day three, they spoke in the microphone four times. And by the end of the day, they decided that they wanted to do my job, which was be a motivational speaker. Now, 
if they never would have went to the microphone the first time, would they have ever been able to get over that fear? So as you have an opportunity to share today and be a discussion leader, I don't want you to be afraid of that opportunity. What I want you guys to do is embrace that opportunity. Does this make sense to you guys? Okay. Does everybody in the room understand the role of the discussion leader? Okay. So we're now going to pick discussion leaders in our room. So everybody raise one of your hands in the air. I need everybody's participation here. Okay. Now, everybody point at somebody at your table. Okay, now. Whoever has the most fingers pointed at them is the discussion leader at that table. Okay, so we got a standoff, huh? All right, guys, five, four, three, two, one, stop. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. So that I know that we're crystal clear on this subject. And guys, listen, the number one skill in our ability to communicate is our ability to what? Listen, so hold all of your applause till the very end, okay? Hold your applause till the very end. But if you are the discussion leader at the table, please stand up. Okay, so row one's good, row number two's good, and row number three is good. You guys stay standing. Now, either these guys chose to be a leader or they were chosen to be a leader. Give them a round of applause. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, stop. Now, those of you that are presently standing have what I call discussion leader powers. What I want you to do with those discussion leader powers is I want you to take them and pass them to the person to the left of you. You are the new discussion leader at that table. Oh, yeah. Okay. Everybody now have a seat. Everybody can now have a seat. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. So guys, just what happened there? The table chose or somebody decided to be a leader and then I as the leader of this presentation chose to have you do what? Pass those powers to the person to the left of you. Now that person's got to make a choice. Do they want to be a discussion leader or do they want to pass off their powers? And remember, we want to embrace the opportunity to, to be what today, guys? Be leaders. And we want to embrace the opportunity to wake up tomorrow morning and operate at what level? Ten. Level 10. Okay? We'll be very encouraging for you today. We're going to be very, very encouraging for you today. So. The first topic that I want you guys to discuss, and you'll get three minutes for each discussion. What I want you guys to discuss is what does it mean to be a leader? What does it mean to be a leader? What does it mean to you guys to be a leader? Now discussion leaders, you need to take notes for sharing. Make sure you get input from each person at your table. And then at the end of the discussion, I will invite two tables to the microphone to come up and discuss what you guys talked about. Does everybody understand? You got three minutes. Go. Okay, guys. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. All right, you guys are awesome. You're doing a great job. Now, I said I was going to invite two tables to the microphone, but today I think we'll invite three tables to the microphone. Now, again, if you did not want to be the leader, you needed to pass your t powers off to somebody at your table that did want to be a leader. Is that correct? Okay. So, who are the first three people in the room that would like to come to the microphone and share? I got one, two, three. Come on up. Give these guys a round of applause. So go right ahead, talk right in. You're almost taller than I am, so here we go. Okay. Um, we think being a leader is not taking control of the group, but to be supportive and to be confident 
and um, being positive to help out who you're helping. <laughs> Very good job. Excellent. Give her a round of applause. Now stay right up here. Just stand right over here. Come on over. What's your name? Tyler Locatus. I'm sorry? Tyler Locatus. Okay, Tyler, go right ahead. Okay. To be a leader, you stand out in your leading group. You have to have confidence and braveness. And a leader helps lead a group of people to achieve a goal. A leader helps lead a group of people to achieve goals. You've got to stand out. You've got to have confidence. Everybody give Tyler and his table a round of applause. Yes, sir, what's your name? Vu. Vu? All right, Vu, go right ahead. Um, to be a good leader, you have to be responsible, good at organizing, do what's right for everyone, confident, have good communication, and friendly. Oh, and friendly. I love that one. Give Vu and his table a round of applause. Now, you guys did an absolute wonderful job picking out what it means to be a leader, some of the qualities of a leader. But I really want to make a number one acknowledgement here. And what's your name? Shannon. Shannon. And where's Shannon's table at? All right, Shannon's table right over here. Shannon said to be a, big, a great leader, you don't have to be in control. Okay, a great leader, guys, creates an environment where people want to be led. Not necessarily where you have to be in control. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. That was absolutely awesome. Give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> now, because these tables were willing to come up and share, and I know a lot of you were willing as well, okay? What I want you guys to do is I want you to increase their confidence. I want you guys to increase their concept. So on three, I don't want you to say, I'm a 10. I want you to say, yours. And you guys are good. You guys are good. All right, you guys ready? One, two, three. You're a 10. Woo. That feel good, guys? Have a seat. Give them a round of applause. Now. If you were the discussion leader at your table, I want you to take your discussion leader powers and pass them back to the person on the right of you. Oh, you guys thought you were off the hook, yeah? No? Okay, five, four, three, two, one, stop. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Guys, remember, five, four, three, two, one, stop means stop talking, focus on me. So. Next topic of discussion is I want you guys to discuss what do you think, and we got some of those qualities out in the last discussion, but what do you think some of the number one qualities of a great leader would be? Okay, what are, I mean, I'm really looking for two really important qualities here of a great leader, and let's see if we can nail these, okay? Really think hard about what would be some of the number one qualities of a great leader. You got three minutes to discuss at your table, go. Okay, who would like to come to the front of the room and present? One, two, three. Somebody was getting volunteered back. Come on up. And four, come on up. We got some leaders in this group. I like it. Give these guys a round of applause. Billy, come on over. Go ahead, Billy. Qualities of being a good leader or uh, being mature, having, uh, being nice, listening to your peers, showing leadership and communication, being responsible and helpful, showing honesty, uh, being positive, keeping your group on task, being organized, and having an open mind. Wow! Give Billy and that table a round of applause. <laughs> Who's next? Go right ahead, sir. What's your name? Josh. Josh. Go right ahead, Josh. <laughs> we said. He has to be a good example, confidence, open-minded, positivity, role model, integrity, honest, responsible, and he's a 10. And he's a 10, or she's a 10. Give him a round of applause. I like it. We said that the qualities of a leader is to be open-minded and to be patient and to be confident of yourself. Very good job. Give her and her table a round of applause. And what's your name? Bray, okay, Bray. Um, traits of a leader have to be confident, honest, 
friendly, trustworthy or trusting of others, hardworking, not controlling, responsibility, open-minded, collaborative, social, and understanding. Woo, round of applause, I like it. Yes, sir, come on over. What's your name? I'm sorry? Jacob. Jacob, I like your shirt, by the way. A good leader has to be mature, fair, friendly, a good listener, loyal, helpful, a confidence builder, brave, have self-control, be prepared, optimistic, and organized. Wow, round of applause, round of applause. All right, guys, come, come kind of stand up. Let's, let's do this. Let's get the full force of this, all right? You guys want the full force of this? Come right up here. Okay, come, come line up right here. Okay, so one of the number one things, guys, to be great leaders, we've got to build our what? We've got to build our confidence, and we've got to build our internal concepts. So you guys know the drill, right? On three, one, two, three. Yes. Woo! Good job, good job. Guys, go have a seat. Give these guys a round of applause. All right, guys, five, four, three, two, one, stop. So you guys really nailed the qualities of a great leader. And I'm really, really excited for that. There was really two qualities that I was looking for here. Okay, and you nailed both of them. Number one is, to be a great leader, you want people to what? Follow. Okay, a leader can't be a leader unless people are willing to follow. Okay, now if you're going to be willing to follow somebody, you got to, you got to what? You got to, you just said it, you got to what? Trust that person. Would you guys agree? So in order to trust somebody, they'd have to be very honest. They'd have to be very honest. Now, who knows what the definition of honesty is? I know somebody over here is because I told you guys. Okay, not to tell a lie. All right, so let's, let's take this. So he says the definition of honesty is not to tell a lie. But let's just go a little bit further. What's your name? Hannah. Hannah. And Hannah, what do you think the definition of honesty is? Okay, to be truthful. Telling the truth to other people. How many of you would agree with that? Everybody give Hannah a round of applause. Now, so honesty is telling the truth to other people. Okay? Who can tell me what it means when you tell the truth to yourself? Who knows what that's called? Self-honest. Okay, so that's called self-honest. You're 100% correct. But there, I'm looking for a word here. One word. Who knows what, I know you guys know. Who else? I'll come to you in a second if nobody else can get it. So honesty is telling the truth to other people, but when you tell the truth to yourself, that's called what? Yes. Confidence. It's called confidence. When you tell the truth to yourself, you're going to build a high level of what? Confidence. confidence. So you're on the right track, but it's one word. Hold on, guys. I know you know. Yes. Integrity. Integrity. What's your name, young man? Spencer, everybody give Spencer a round of applause. So guys, when you tell the truth to other people, that's called honesty. When you tell the truth to yourself, that's called integrity. And the way I like to say it best, and this is a tough one, guys. It's a tough one for adults. It's a tough one for kids. But what are you doing when people ain't watching? That's integrity. All right, now everybody grab a piece of paper. Whether you keep this piece of paper or not, I want you to write this down. Because when we write things down, we have a tendency to what? Remember them. Okay, when we write things down, we have a tendency to remember them. So I want you to write this down. All right, everybody listen. Everybody listen. This is what I call one of the universal laws of being, one of the universal laws of being a great leader. Write this down. I will always do exactly what I say I will do. I will always do exactly what I say I will do. Now, how many of you in the room have been programmed your entire life that our word is our what? Our bond, yes? So when we make agreements in this world, when we make agreements with other people in this world, should we keep those agreements? Okay? When we make agreements with ourselves, 
should we keep those agreements? Does that make sense, guys? Now, who are we quicker to break an agreement with? Ourselves or somebody else in this world? What do you guys think? You're quicker to break one with somebody else than with yourself? Okay, I, 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 like, that, I like that thought, yes. Your, ourselves. Guys, when you get right down to it and you really take a look at this agreement, I will always do exactly what I say I will do. Usually in life, we're quicker to break an agreement that we make with ourselves before we'd make one with somebody else. Who can tell me the reason for that? What do you guys think? Yes? So if I make an agreement with Casey, which by the way, if you guys love this, this, this was her idea. Okay, if you guys don't like the weekend this, or the afternoon, this was uh, her idea. No, I'm just kidding. So Casey said when we make agreements with ourselves and we break them, nobody else knows. But if I make an agreement with Casey and I break that agreement, what can Casey do? She can hold me accountable for that. And there could be consequences when I break those agreements. Yes? Okay. Why else are we more willing to break internal agreements that we make with ourselves before we break one with somebody else? Yes, sir? Okay, nobody else knows. It's just you. It doesn't matter. Nobody knows. Yes? Yeah, well, it's going to hurt me. It won't hurt somebody else. I'm less valuable than what other people are. Sometimes that's what we think internally. Yes? Wow, what's your name? Malou. Malou. She said that you can't be capable of being mean to other people, but you can be mean to yourself. Wow. Wow, very impressive. Yes, Hannah. Sometimes it's easier to like, trust other people instead of like, trusting yourself with something. Wow. Guys, I got goosebumps right now. Think about that. She said sometimes it's easier to be more trusting of other people than it is to be trusting of yourself. Guys, this is pretty powerful stuff. What else? Anybody else in the room? Any other ideas? So, guys, here's the bottom line. When you break an internal agreements that you make with yourself, that lowers your what? That lowers your confidence, which is going to lower your concept, which is going to lower your what? Results. So how many of you would like to have a gigantic clue every time in your life when you're getting ready to break an internal agreement that you make with yourself? Okay, you guys want a clue? It's very, very simple. It starts the second you start making, what is it? Excuses. When you guys catch yourself making an excuse about anything, I want you to remember this moment in time in your life, and I want you to look inside, and I want you to think, what agreement am I getting ready to break? How many of you in the room um, play sports? Okay, so a lot of you in the room play sports. Wow, excellent, because that'll increase your what? Confidence, that'll increase your confidence. Now, how many of you have experienced today where you didn't want to go to practice? Okay, because you were what? Tired, or there was something else going on, or you just didn't want to go that day. So you start making all kinds of what? Excuses. Excuses, so that you don't have to go to practice. Now, guys, at a big level, that may not mean a lot to you right now, but what you want to understand is to become a great leader, you guys got to increase your what? Confidence. You got to increase your internal concept. But every single time you break an internal agreement with yourself, Hannah, what are you doing? You're lowering your level of, okay, what you just said, though, also lowers your level of trust in yourself, which would be self-confidence. Guys, does this make sense to you? Okay. All right, so how many of you in the room would like to try out your leadership skills? All right, so we've got some exercises and we're going to have some fun with this. 
So the first thing I want you to do, if you were the last discussion leader at your table, I want you to go over to the back table and I want you to get a number of blindfolds for your entire table, okay? The blindfolds are over here. And you also, Spencer, you also need a rope. But what I want you guys to do is get into a circle, have your blindfold on your shoulder, Okay, just put your blindfold on your shoulder and then everybody get in a circle and put the rope in front of you and everybody have two hands on the rope but make it into a circle. Each table find a spot in the room and if you don't have a rope, just set tight. Now, what I want everybody to do is put the ropes down on the ground on the top of your toes at your feet because you're going to have to grab them just a second with your blindfold on. Okay, everybody listen to the rules very, very closely. Not yet, but in a moment. Okay, I'm going to have you put the blindfold, not yet, but in a moment. I'm going to have you put the blindfolds on. And then I'm going to give you 60 seconds once the blindfolds are on to turn your rope into a square. And at the end of 60 seconds... I'm going to have you put the rope on the ground. When I say stop, you put the rope on the ground and you can take off your blindfold. Now, do you guys need me to read the, repeat the directions again? Does everybody understand the directions? Okay, everybody put on your blindfold. If you need help from your partner, we'll help you. If anybody needs help, we'll help you. So everybody got your blindfolds on. Everybody grab your rope. You've got... 60 seconds, put your rope into a square, go! <laughs> you guys got 25 seconds, 25 seconds! Five, four, three, two, one, stop! Put the ropes on the ground! Take off your blindfold. What, that's not a square. <laughs> All right, five, four, three, two, one, stop. Hey, no touch of the rope after it's on the ground. Everybody just listen up. So I've, I've got a couple of really good jobs in the room. Wow, that's really, really close. But guys, does a square have ripples in it? Squares would be four straight what? Lines. Now, in your groups, I'm giving you 30 seconds to discuss what was difficult about that exercise. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, stop. Guys, what was difficult about that exercise? Everyone started talking at the same time. Everybody started talking at the same time. What was difficult about that exercise? You guys didn't communicate properly, okay? What was difficult about this exercise? You couldn't see. Hmm. Okay, I wonder why. What was difficult about this exercise? You couldn't really find out what the length was. Okay, so you didn't know what the length of the rope was. That made it difficult. So that, that makes it a mathematical equation, right? It is. Yes. So you couldn't see, that made it difficult. What made it difficult for you guys? We can't like, we didn't know who everyone was talking to. Oh, we didn't know who everybody was talking to. What made it difficult about this exercise? Not knowing where everybody was. Not knowing where everybody was. What made it difficult about this exercise? Get it from our plan. You didn't have a plan. Hmm. Okay, so take 30 seconds and discuss what would make it easier about that. What would make the exercise easier? If you had some planning, okay? So some planning would definitely help. Would you guys agree? All right, with this group here, what would make it easier about the exercise? If, we could have more time. if you could have more time, okay? Guys, what do you think would make it easier about the exercise? If we could hear us talking. If you could hear each other talking so you could communicate better, yes? All right, so what do you guys think would make better about the exercise? If it was quieter. If it was quieter in the room, but it's not quieter in the room, okay? What do you guys think would make it easier about the exercise? Having a leader. Having, what's your name? 
Did everybody hear what Madison said? Okay, she said if they had a leader in their group, the exercise would have been easier. How many of you agree with that? So, so guys, listen. So the blindfold is an obstacle. Yes or no? So, and it's hard to communicate because everybody's talking at one time. Yes? And you guys didn't have a plan in place. So if you had a leader, could you strategize? Could you put together a plan? Could you communicate better? You have 10 seconds to pick a leader. You now have a leader. You have 30 seconds to strategize. In other words, come up with a plan. Go! Remember the rules, guys. When you pick your rope up, it has to be in a circle. All right, you have 10 seconds. Go! Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Put him down. All right, everybody discuss in your groups what worked, what didn't work. You got 30 seconds, go. Okay, what worked, what didn't work? What worked is that we had a leader and we knew what to do. What didn't work is that not everyone knew exactly where they were, so they didn't know how to listen properly. So we had a leader, but not everybody worked together as a team. And I also reduced what? Reduce the amount of time, which put more pressure on the situation. Leaders got to perform what? Quickly. Quickly. Yes. What worked? What didn't work? Um, we communicated better with a leader. And okay, you communicated better with the leader. You guys did a better job. Who's the leader here? What worked? What didn't work? Uh, we, we were able to make a plan this time and get a perfect... So you guys put together a plan, which helped it go much quicker. Who's the leader here? What worked, what didn't work? It worked that we knew like what, or we had a strategy, but what we didn't work was everyone knowing what to do. Okay, not everybody knowing what to do. You had a strategy, but everybody didn't know what to do. So to, to be a great leader, you got to create what? People that want to follow. you got to have teamwork. Yes, what worked, what didn't work? What worked, what didn't work? Having more time to like make a plan is what worked. And it didn't work with the trash cans in the way, and nobody would like move. Okay, so nobody, so, so then the team wasn't willing to what? Adjust or move. Guys, when things don't work, as leaders, we've got to recognize and we've got to make what? We've got to make changes. We've got to make adjustments. And sometimes that's got to happen really what? Quickly. So you guys are already, hold on one second. I'm going to give you a chance to adjust, okay? So if you need to make an adjustment or if you need to move a table, you've got five seconds to make an adjustment. Now, guys, all great leaders in this world have what? Okay, they have responsibility, but they also have, how about support? All great leaders in this world have mentors. Guys, how many of you in the room know what a mentor is? Somebody willing to take you by the hand and show you the way that has already been there and done that. Guys, does that make sense? Okay, so, discussion leaders, all of you, come to me very quickly. If you're the leader of the group, come to me. So, although I told you guys that you needed to put your blindfolds on, in the rules it doesn't say that you can't take the blindfolds off. So, I'm going to start the, the, the exercise the exact same way, okay? But as soon as I say go, I want you to say, as the, discuss as the leader of the group, I give you permission to take your blindfolds off, put them into a perfect square, and the exercise is over, put them on the ground. Does that make sense, guys? All right, go. Okay, everybody put your ropes in a circle. Make them into a circle. Make it into a circle. Everybody put your blindfolds on. All right, everybody pick up your ropes.
and you have 10 seconds to turn your rope into a square. Go! Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Put him on the ground. All right. Looks like everybody in the room has almost perfect squares. Everybody give yourselves a round of applause. So, guys, we only got about 10 more minutes. How many of you would like to do one more exercise really quick? Was that fun? Yeah. Did you guys have a good time? Okay, I'm going to give you guys one shot at this. Everybody, get, everybody in your group, listen up. Okay, you're going to get one shot at this. You didn't get a ball. Now you got one. Okay, I'm going to give you the rules. I'll give you the rules one time. I'm going to give you guys a chance to strategize. And I want to see what group does the best job. Okay, the first person that touches the ball has to be the last person to touch the ball. Everybody in your group has to touch the ball. I want to see which group can complete the task the quickest. You guys have 30 seconds to strategize. Okay, I need to give you one more rule. First person that touches the ball has to be the last person that touches the ball. Everybody cannot touch the ball at the same time. Does everybody understand the rules? Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, go. When you've completed your task, stand up. All right. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. This group right here did it the quickest. How'd you guys accomplish your task? Well, we put it on the ground and we went in a circle and we all touched we it. Already had our fingers, like, yeah, we had our fingers. fingers. You already had your fingers close to it. Everybody just close to it. And the first person to touch the ball was the last person to touch the ball. Yes, sir. You guys displayed great teamwork and great leadership. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> guys, I want you to write this down. Find a piece of paper and write this down. If I can't, I must, write this down. If I can't, I must. If I can, I will. Failure's not an option. Let me repeat that for you. If I can't, I must. If I can, I will. Failure's not an option. Now, I've given you two of the universal laws that I believe are about becoming leaders, about becoming entrepreneurs, um, about a way of being in life. And I have two people in the room that have volunteered to read these two agreements. Claire, would you please come up to the front of the room? And I also have Caitlin. I want Claire to go first. Now, before we read these agreements, guys, I want you to know that a lot of these agreements talk about becoming entrepreneurs. But it's not just about becoming entrepreneurs, they're about becoming leaders. Claire, go right ahead, read that agreement, please. Huh? No, we've already said it. I've heard the message, I will always do what I say I will do. My word is my bond throughout my life. I've always thought I understood its meaning, and for the most part, I work to keep the agreements I make with others. However, I am realizing what I really need to examine is to whom do I make and then break agreements with most often and why. Suddenly I realize the one person I break the most agreements with is me. The truth is, I know when I make agreements with others and break them, there will be an accountability and consequences. On the other hand, when I break the agreement with myself, no one knows, but my excuse is a justification of my unwillingness to keep an agreement. This law forces me to recognize the fact that when I break an agreement with myself, there is accountability and consequences to both my future and my family's future. It is the most important universal law of being, of being an entrepreneur because unless I adhere to it, the rest of the agreement becomes meaningless. When I give my word, I am making an agreement, a promise, a pact that must be kept. If I don't keep that agreement, I am actually giving myself permission to fail and remain in the same financial situation I am in currently. I am, in currently. I am clear that there are tremendous consequences that result when I break agreements with myself. 
I am also clear that many commitments I break are broken at subconscious levels, allowing me to just sweep them under the carpet. Keeping my word is the first step to building my character, and it is the first step to growing into a leader of others. Once I have become completely clear of the monumental importance of keeping agreements with myself and with others, I have taken the first step of building the character and leadership skills that will allow me to create the life of my dreams and a legacy for the future generations. Everybody give Claire a round of applause, and here's a book if you'd like to have one, The Universal Law. Kayla, come on up. Huh? Yes, yes. Every interpreter hits roadblocks and obstacles along the pathway to financial freedom. Growth means change, and the process of change includes new tasks that might seem overwhelming. Knowing this, I must live by the law. If I can't, I must. If I can't, I will. Failure is not an option, because if I don't, I will give up when challenges come my way. I will be stopped by my old programming and belief systems about what is possible. Getting out of my comfort zone creates a fear of making changes, fear of risk, and my old programming pops up telling me to hold on to what I've worked so hard to achieve. From today forward, I will remove the phrase, I can't, and reprogram my brain to tell myself I must. This doesn't mean that I will succeed at everything I do in life, but it does mean I have attempted to succeed and I have made progress toward my goals. I will be on the alert for times when I think I can't do it because I now realize that every single time I overcome an obstacle that seems insurmountable, I have changed as a person and grown as a leader. The phrase I must will become a gigantic clue that I am ready for my next break. Everybody give Kate a round of applause, and if you'd like to have a book, you're welcome to have one. Guys, did anybody learn anything about being a leader today? Did you guys have fun today? If you'd like a copy of those two agreements, at the very back table, you can pick up a copy uh, before you leave, and I've got about 12 books up here. If anybody would like one, The Laws of Being a Leader, you gotta come and grab one real quick. I'm all done for the day. We're done, guys. If you want a book, come grab one.